with the last round from the Reykjavik Open. Dina has the black pieces. She's playing a Canadian player rated 1822. I thought she was going to get paired up, but I was wrong. Looks like her opponent played e4. So that generally means that Dina will play the Carol Khan when she gets you know, the camera set up and everything. Yeah, camera looks good. Mm-hmm. Let me just chat her. Good morning, guys. Let's see. Dina's opponent is Canadian. This is the last round. So if Dina can win the game, she'll have six out of nine, which is quite a good score, I think. Where is Dina? You know, she's always running just a little bit late. But she's got to be around somewhere. She turned, she turned the camera on. <laughs> I don't know why she's not at the board yet, but I guess she was just running a little late. <clears throat> the photographer's waiting patiently for Dina. <laughs> yeah, that was a good photo that they took of Dina yesterday. She used it as a thumbnail on the YouTube feed. Very nice shot. I don't know who the photographer is, do you? Uh-uh. Some guy. They actually, look, there's more than one. Yeah. I don't know any, except for photo chess and David Lada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dina is losing time a bit. Yeah, I bet she'll sit down soon. Yay, the chess wizard raided with a party of himself. All right. Party of one, like when he goes out to eat. The, is that Salamova there in the background? Somebody said, hey, Salamova. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell from there. Hmm. Maybe. Hi, Findus in Denmark. The camera loves Dana. Yes, it does. That was a great picture with that green sweater. It's Dina. All right, let's see what she's got on. I think I've seen this top before, and I love this top. Or maybe, maybe it was, yeah, I think I've seen this one. Look at that. I love the outfit, Dina. Too bad she can't hear me. But oh. she can hear you in spirit. <laughs> so, I, I haven't seen Dina do anything except the Carol Khan. So I accept, expect she'll play the Carol Khan. Mm -hmm. And she did. Most testing lines in the Carol Khan nowadays is the advanced variation with E5. And that's what he played. She always plays Bishop F5 here, which is the most common move.
Yes, I don't know anything about the Car Carol Khan. You know that C5 is the Botvinnik Carl's variation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was kind of wondering, like, what do you do about the lock on the center there? Do you just ignore it and develop? Uh-huh. Yeah, she played bishop f5. He played knight f3. If he plays bishop e2 next, it's the Nigel Short variation. In the 1980s and 1990s, everybody played knight c3 here. <clears throat> and the idea was to play g4 early. And people stopped doing that, and now... They play either knight f3 or h4 as the most common moves. Other moves are played too, like knight d2, knight e2. Knight f3 was a favorite of Nigel Short, which he popularized in the 90s and 2000s. White just developed simply. Her opponent's FIDE rating is in the title of this stream. His rating is 1822, and he's from Canada. Both players have five out of eight. How's it going, Charlie Flayed? Somebody in the chat said, do you think Dina is swooning for her opponent? That's the only thing I think about. Looks like a handsome chap. Is that your wife sitting next to you, Ben? It says Miami Heat. I hope so. <laughs> Unless it's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> yes. His wife is sitting next to him. So black can play knight d7 or knight e7 or h6. I think those are the three most common moves. On the other hand, thinking's not my strong suit. So let's go to the database. Thanks for the sub, Gamma Trayon. There's going to be a lot of games in this position. Uh, she played bishop b4 check. Yeah, I've seen that too. No, this is the last round. There won't be any more x crawter. It seems like he's familiar with this line since he's playing instantly. What's his name, Devin? Uh-huh. Okay, bishop b4 check yeah, is the move that's played a lot by the engines. Um, c3, bishop a5. Carlson's played this, von Forest, Saren, Andraken, engines. Queen b3 is the third most common move in this position. Uh, the most common is for white to castle, and the second most common is knight b to d2. Queen b3 has been played by Elianov, Pichot, Medzchesvili, and somebody I never heard of. And it's been played 16 times, whereas castles has been played 127 times. So uh, Dina may not be familiar with queen b3 since it's pretty rare. But her opponent knows it because he played it instantly. There's a game played between Elianov and Panamaryov in 2013. Black played queen b6. And white played queen a3, which looks annoying. 
another game with queen b6, white played knight h4. And black can also play queen c8. And bishop b6 is also a move. So black has played queen b6, queen c8, and bishop b6 in this position. But there's not a lot of games. There's very few games. Yeah, this is quite annoying. After queen b6, queen a3, the bishop's trapped. So we have to move our queen again, I guess, because b4 would win our bishop. And white wants to play knight h4 ASAP and get the two bishops. Obviously, if white plays knight h4 earlier, black will play queen takes h4 with advantage. So when black plays queen c8 or queen b6, then white can get the two bishops with knight h4. So the strong engine says black can sacrifice the pawn with knight d7 or knight e7 or play bishop b6. That's what the engine likes. It seems like her opponent is better prepared in this position than she is. Hello from Canada. His name is Devin Nicholson. Somebody said Devin is is a real lad and would love that you're commentating his game. Mm. Is he like chess lad? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is he that much of a lad? Wow. Little boy, little boy. Steve Condi subscribed on our stream. Thank you. Yay. And Gametron or Gametreon or something, Gametreon, subscribed also. Thank you. Thanks for supporting the stream. The more you subscribe, the more subs we have. Look at this cool engine line. This is the greatest line in chess history. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the weak engine. So this is like a joke, but it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Knight d7, queen takes b7, bishop takes b1, rook takes b1, bishop takes c3 check. Confusing my wife. And the idea is if you take, I have this skewer. Okay. That's really cool. That is cool. I didn't say the moves were good, but the engine suggests that line as, as a line. So that's pretty funny. That shows you how hard chess is. Moves that nobody would ever think of. So after thinking for a couple of minutes, uh, the good engine says black should play knight d7 or knight e7 uh, or queen b6. Now it says bishop b6. So basically all the moves are about the same and the engine slightly prefers white. How's it going, stranger chess? If queen captures rook after the skewer, the knight on d7 would take the queen. Which is probably what white would do. Dina's rating is 2164. So I didn't tell you this, and you probably don't know, but uh, w when the game ended and Dina and I did post-mortem, Dina spent a lot of time talking about uh, uh, Andrea Botez taking Adderall before the game 
and her results and her speed during the play based on that. Oh. And she spent a lot of time talking about it. She's like, in this game, Botez played really slowly. That means she did or didn't take Adderall. <laughs> and then Botez talks about it a lot, Andrea, about whether she takes Adderall before she has the ADHD, game. Yeah. And about whether that helps her results. Does whether it? it help, well, yeah, I don't know. Oh. But, but Dina was like, based on the, how quickly she played this game or how slowly, that means she did or didn't take Adderall before the game. I didn't think that was something that would be discussed in an open forum, but I'm sure Kramer likes it. Okay, she played bishop b6, which is probably what I would have played because then white can't play knight h4 because you take it. And very fortunately, it seems like her opponent is not familiar with bishop b6 because he played instantly every move, and now he's like, bishop b6, what's that? So that's good. Now he'll play slowly because he's Canadian. So what was the best move? All moves were about the same. Bishop e6 is one of them. That was one of them. Oh, that you said that. Yeah, they were all about the mm -hmm. same. So the engine says if white wants an advantage, white should play a4 with the idea of a5. Uh, or bishop g5 attacking the queen, developing the bishop. It says otherwise it's just equal. Those are the only ways for white to fight for an advantage. Now that <clears throat> Dina's opponent is out of his preparation, it's time for him to prove his rating. Yesterday, yeah. Ivanchuk resigned in a position the engine said was very slightly worse for him against a strong female opponent. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. He's probably furious when he found out. He, he behaves strangely sometimes. Oh, really? He'll resign in positions that aren't lost or he'll play too fast or too slow. He's an unusual person. Also, he's quite good at checkers. Probably, in chess terms, he's about 2,200 at checkers. Mm -hmm. Chat's loving the opponent's hair. They just keep talking about his hair. You, usually, the chat is in love with Dina. However, in this particular game, the chat is in love with Dina's opponent. <laughs> and he did play a4, which is the best move. Oh, I missed Anna. Anna Cranley walked the, past. This is actually quite quite interesting. If black plays the obvious h5, white can once again play knight h4 because even though the queen can take the knight, the queen is also defending the bishop. So after a5, white should play knight h4. <coughs> if black plays something like queen c7 or queen c8 to defend the pawn, then knight h4 also. So White has excellent chances to get the two bishops here with knight h4. Excuse me. Bless you. I, I did play in Reykjavik in 1990. That was a fun tournament. I did well in the Blitz tournament. 
in the last round, I played somebody with the exact same rating as me, 2480. I remember what my rating and my opponent's rating were in 1990. His name was Erling Mortensen, Scandinavian player, and I lost with White in a drawn end game. If I had won, uh, I would have tied for first. Instead, he tied for first. It was a 10 way tie for first. Iceland was very, very cold when I was there. It was in April of 1990. It was one of the coldest Aprils ever there. 30 below zero. And somebody asked me, was that Fahrenheit or Celsius? And my answer was, first one, then the other. And that's a Futurama reference for those of you who don't get it, which is most of you. Dina and her opponent have five out of eight. The Kiro Khan is a strategically rich opening, so I think it's a very good opening when you're playing for a win because you get asymmetrical positions that are not easy to play for either side correctly. GM Smurfette says, Dina's opponent is probably the cutest guy in the building. <laughs> what, is, what does Karen think? Um, yeah, I mean, he's an attractive young guy. Who's better looking, him or Magnus? <laughs> The answer is always Magnus whenever I ask her anything. Oh, uh, you know. I mean, they're both nice looking. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay, him or Bartholomew? Now that we're objectifying all the players. Yeah. Bartholomew or that guy? <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess, yeah, they're both nice looking. Bartholomew. Mm-hmm. This guy doesn't look old. I could look up his age. It would take me about 10 seconds. I guess somebody else could. Go, go to the internets and type in his name and type in Fide, and then it'll tell you the year he was born. He looks like he's about 24 to me. What do you guess? What? What? I didn't hear what you I said. I was guessing he's 24. Um... Yeah, I'm going to say 28. Hey. <laughs> well, I think they're guessing. Oh, they're just guessing. I don't think they looked it up. <laughs> okay, I'll have to look it up because I, I can't trust anybody. If they say they looked it up, I don't believe them. <laughs> he was born in 1996. So that would make him 28, unless he's 27. <laughs> it's actually more likely he's 27. But. Yeah. Cobra says he's my son. <laughs> His mother is in the chat, apparently, so I would believe her. And she says he's 28. Well, darn, he's sitting back now. We're covering him up. Yeah, no sitting back. Stop, <laughs> stop being Canadian. Be more fierce. But the video stuck, so when it gets unstuck, maybe he'll be sitting up. Yeah.
Salamova won yesterday? Wow, she must be fighting for first place. No, we lost the video feed. That's weird. Did that happen before? No. I, I've had it freeze like it did, but not lose it. Lauren, there's something in my eye. <sighs> Well, that's not good. I don't mean, I don't think she's checking, but. And we're ahead of the chess.com. Yep. It's going to be a long time before we see a move. I can if, just... if we don't have the video feed. Yeah, because the video feed has no delay, and the chess.com feed does have a delay. Mm -hmm. So we're ahead of the chess.com feed because you know, we can see the moves. Often yesterday, I was making series of moves before they were played. So I was the opposite of chess.com. I was 15 minutes ahead. I was like, oh, they're going to play this. That's what I just said. No, I mean... I don't mean I was making the moves when they made them. I mean, I made them before they made them. I just guessed what moves they were going to oh. make. Yeah, so I was 15 minutes ahead, and they're 15 okay. minutes behind on chess.com. And I was right when I did that. But one time I made, like, several moves. I was like, ah, they're going to do this for sure. Yeah, guys, well, we don't really know what happened. So we're just going to hang tight and assume that Dino will notice somehow that it's not working and fix it. That's all we can do. Yeah, we don't know if there's a way for her to... I think she can see the chat. Um, at least right before it starts. But, you know, they're not going to... want her looking at chat. I would think in general, yeah. It's possible she looks at the camera every 20 minutes to make sure it's working. Right. And then she sees it's not working and fixes it. Yeah. It does seem like maybe that, there was a battery that, issue. That's our hope. <laughs> I'm talking. It, is, so it seems like there's a battery issue for it just to suddenly stop. Who may Karen cry? No, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a cold. The great Danton. So I don't feel 100% because of it. I got like a sinus pressure. <laughs> Tea grass. Wow, the tournament hall is even darker today. Tobias wants to know, he says he's been playing chess four years. He's around 1,900 feet A. He never studied openings. Should he start working on a repertoire now? Yes. Especially if you're 1,900 feet A. That's pretty good to not know openings. You'll probably jump right up. It's also possible a tournament organizer or director is watching the feeds occasionally, notices Dina's feed is down, and tells her. That's possible. Yeah. It's also possible that won't happen. So we have chances to get it back, but uh, 
they're, they're not excellent chances. Yeah, Jack Gleason, we don't know what happened to the camera. It just went out. That's all we know. It's never happened before. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go get some Advil from mm -hmm. my sinus and take some Sudafed and I'll be back. Mm -hmm. I bet the dogs are napping. Yeah. And they got canned food. In the chat, a lot of times and currently people ask, are people allowed to do this? And are people allowed to do that? You're allowed to do whatever you want. So the answer is yes. Dean is allowed to do anything. Nobody can stop you. Dean is physically very strong. So if we don't have the video, we're going to have to rely on uh, chess.com's moves, which are in a 15-minute delay. Black can play most likely queen c7 or a5. Black can also sacrifice a pawn with knight d7, a5, bishop c7, queen b7, also playable. I should have had Karen get me more coffee, but I didn't think of it. I wouldn't think of it. That's good dogs. So how many of you think the story from the Dodgers and Otani is true that the guy just robbed him? And how many of you think Otani has a gambling problem and they're hiding it because uh, that would be bad? It's, it's one of them. I assume everybody's lying and that Otani has some, some kind of guilt always assume everybody is lying. I probably read something. I, don't, I wouldn't read anything. Man, Yastiel Puig used to be great. Then he started playing in like the Dominican League or something.
I don't know who these people are, but I'll go with everybody is lying option. Yeah. <clears throat> no video Somebody video. claims Anna Maya's feed was gone earlier also, but that could be unrelated. Did it come back? I don't know. Oh. I just, they just said that. Oh. I should have had you get me coffee, but I didn't think of it. Uh, I, I wouldn't think of it. Go get some. Just... Yeah, because my cup runneth over. Well, it does look like hers is gone. <clears throat> we got people are talking about it over here. Okay, so maybe it's not the camera. Maybe it's the internet at the local source. Maybe. Let me see what's going we on. We have chances that it's, you know... Yeah. I mean, it seems unlikely that both of them would have different mm -hmm. tech problems, but... Somebody could have cut the internet cable with Occam's razor. <laughs> Looks like I haven't used Occam's razor in a long time. I gotta, yeah. I gotta shave. <laughs> It's just Dana and Anamaya. The rest are fine. Okay, well, I was trying to check Botez, but it's just endless ads playing. Well, there's on the right Botez, so they're, they're, oh, they're, I didn't they're see okay. That. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they are still there. Mm -hmm. Man, they got windows. Mm -hmm. Although, even though that's nice, in some ways, it's actually not good to have the light behind. Mm-hmm. But we can see the view a little bit. I don't think Chester and Anna Crambling up, as is Lula and Alexandra. Now, I don't know if Lula and Alexandra are up or they're not. I mean, either. I was just thinking that. What does that all mean? Well, the Botez stream is still up. And um, Anna's up. Lula's up. Mm-hmm. Lula's by the window, too. All right, well, we'll just be patient. Sabotage. <laughs> Sabotage. <laughs> it's funny, if, if there is an internet problem and, and at the tournament site, I'm not saying there is, then we might not get any moves <laughs> from chess.com. Terrible. Well, I mean, hopefully that's not going to be the issue, an mm -hmm. issue. <clears throat> oh, Dana had a window on the first round but asked to be moved. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to see out the window, but it it's harder for the... If the light's behind the source you're trying to look at with the camera, the people don't look as good, so I can see why she'd want to move. She's much... She looks clearer than those by the windows. Chess protege, protigua... Says what happened with the camera? We don't know. We're we're hoping that um, it gets resolved. Anamaya and Dina both are having Ooh, camera somebody, issues. Some, oh, that was you, I guess. Yeah, what? That was you. Oh. I knew somebody said something. I was like, that's right, you did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It says Dina's playing one hundred and her opponent's playing ninety nine point four, and yeah, white is better. GM Smurfette says, is it possible to put up a picture of Devin while we are waiting? <laughs> Impossible.
Yeah, maybe they are on the same end point. Maybe they're sharing some kind of cables. Can I give a shout out to Chucky for withdrawing from the tournament? I didn't know he withdrew from the tournament. Who's Chucky? Yvonne Chuck. Oh. Chucky is in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like it's been 15 minutes. So I'm getting worried that chess.com doesn't have the feed either. But maybe it hasn't been. Yeah, I didn't time it. But I did send the message at 7.35. Well, I don't have my glasses on, but whatever that says, I think it's 7.35. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. Yeah, I can't see that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, look, I highlighted 7.35. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it has been 15 minutes, now 16 minutes. So, a little concerning. One of the photographers probably tripped on a wire or something. Is Canada's fault? Blame Canada. Tobias says, I mean, if the camera's battery is low, simply noticing it is not going to fix it, except she has a spare one. She probably, you know, has the cord for the camera because I wouldn't expect it to last five hours or, you know, without a cord. Yeah, I would expect it's plugged in. Yes, it's probably plugged in. But it could be that one of... I mean, I can't blame it on her camera since Anna Mai is also out. It seems like it's a problem at, with the organizer equipment. I have seen a music. We, the live board feed. We don't need to switch to it. We are, we are on it. The board is a live board. Um, although maybe you do have to manually... Do you have to manually refresh? Or does it automatically no, it take shouldn't. a... I did refresh. Oh, you did. But, yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, so the, the live board... <clears throat> the live camera... I'm sorry, the live board feed from chess.com is on a 15-minute delay. Uh, and the camera feed was not on a delay, so we were able to, or Ben was able to input the moves before the chess.com feed. So now we're waiting and hoping that that's not messed up for some reason as well. <clears throat> yeah, it's been more than 15 minutes, so chess.com isn't getting the moves for this game anymore. Unless there hadn't been a move or something for a long time. That's possible that Dean has been thinking for several minutes. Yeah. So we won't give or up. It could be Dina's been trying to fix the camera for 15 minutes <laughs> and isn't moving. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to get a move in a moment. Dina's black. Devin, is it Nicholson? Devin Nicholson is the opponent. Mm -hmm. Fide, 1822. Rating. I saw all we can do is wait. Has seen no music. <clears throat> Yeah, jo Jordy M., the camera was working for a little while. That's why we have any moves at all. It, it's still the best coverage you can get. <laughs> There's no moves and no video, but it's still good. <laughs> Even in the future, nothing works. Oh, I heard a noise. Oh, okay, good. So the... the Game is on a delay, so that's still working. Good. Back in action. Okay, now the engine wants to play knight h4 as its best move, with bishop g5 as the second best move, and the third best move is unbelievable. 
<laughs> the engine says Rook G1 is the third best move. Yeah, he won't play Rook G1. Yeah, now it got rid of Rook G1. Knight H4 is an interesting move because typically the queen is preventing that, but the queen is busy defending the bishop. That would be a good trade for white if black takes and white takes the bishop, then white has the two bishops. Bishop G5 is also very reasonable. <laughs> Charlie Fleet says, at least you didn't wake up at 3 a.m. for this. Chucky did not withdraw. So Anamaya is the other streamer who's out. Mm hmm yeah, in fact, let me check on her and then we'll just leave it open as another point. Yeah, see right here. Mm -hmm. So you know, we could make our board bigger. I mean, might be one thing to do. But it's kind of dumb like this. We could give another minute, maybe just make it a little bit more, we'll fill the space until it comes back. Mm hmm. But if you're going to do anything, you got to duplicate. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. You, you like doing stuff. Well, I just, you can't just go changing stuff. That's all. Just don't go changing. Let's see. Duplicate. Yeah, it's back. Never mind. Oh, good. Yeah. Just when I was going to fix fix stuff. This is actually from before. This this is not live. This is from before it broke. Oh, it is? Oh, now it went away again. Yep. Yeah, that was when it was broke because A5 wasn't played yet. Oh. Man, I don't see how you can see that. Yeah, you could see he was sitting the same way. Oh. That's weird that that popped up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you let her know to the chess v king. Well, th thank you for doing that. Weird things are happening now. I like that. You got a message passed to her. Okay, well, this is live. This is a five. Okay. Yeah, th this is actually some moves. Queen C7, and he looks like, well, he castled and played knight BD2. There's no way for me to know which one he did first. Darn. And then she played knight A6, and she played another move. Looks like she played H6, and he played... Ah, she just played h6. Okay, so he either played knight bd2 or he castled. I don't know which one. I'll know in 15 minutes. <laughs> so I'll play one of them. Then she played here. He played here. And she played h6. Good, get rid of knight, that bishop. Knight a6 is a strange move. Karen complained to the manager. So it's possible this happened. It's also possible white played knight bd2 and then castled. But same position. We'll find out at some point. Yeah, the engine, if we could talk about like the strong engine, the strong engine wants to play f6 here instead of queen c7. Then the strong engine wants to play knight h4 and get the two bishops. Then knight a6 is a weird move. I don't know why she played knight a6. That's very strange. Yeah, 
now wants to play knight h4 again, and then h6 is a good move. So the strong engine says white is slightly better. I mean, typically you want the knight on d7, not on, not on a6. Looks like he played bishop e3. I'm going to get some more coffee. Okay. Need anything from upstairs? No, I'm good. Have a great experience, says... Is Ivanchuk being paid a big appearance fee? No idea. I would say no. But I don't know. For this kind of tournament. Can you name the only Billy Joel song in which he uses the F-bomb? Um... No. I do not know. Chucky plays this every year, does he not? Yeah, I don't know. I would say there's no parents' fees. People just really want to play it because it's a good tournament. Top players get some kind of accommodation. Oh, they do? Either free hotel or shared hotel. Yeah. But probably no appearance fee? For the top players, I don't know. People were just wondering. Nobody's at the board, so it's definitely Dina's game. Right. The only question is, will Dina play bishop h7 or bishop a7 first? Because it's likely she'll play both. So black wants to play knight e7, bishop h7, knight f5, castles, and eventually c5. Yeah, this is a real Karo Khan type position. It's hard hard to play for both sides because it's so blocked up in the middle. So what, what do you think her idea was to put the knight on a6? I don't know why she played knight a6. That's a strange move. The knight like always goes to d7 in the Karo Khan in this variation. I guess she wants to dissuade uh, White from playing c4 because mm -hmm. then her knight will have the b4 square. That's what I was looking and at. Maybe that's White's best plan, she thinks. So she's making it less palatable for him. That That's a good reason. I don't know if it's that's why she did it, but probably. Just don't play c4 and I guess it prevents b4 later too. Although white can play queen a3 and b4, possible. Best appearance fee I ever got was in the Kings versus Queens tournament in St. Louis. Uh, got a $5,000 appearance fee. And it was a five-day tournament where we played one game of rapid and one game of 960 rapid. So it was 10 games total. It was the men versus the women. We won uh, 30 and a half to 19 and a half. So our team won, so we got a team prize. 
Plus, I won a place prize. I came in second to Nakakaru. That was in 2011, I think. Unless it was 2012. It was one of them. Dina's dark square bishop is just a fancy pawn. But it's fancy. Says Ewan Sully. Yeah, Anna Maya didn't get her feedback. Oh, so I got the move order wrong. According to chess.com, he played knight bd2 first. So I didn't know if white castled and then played knight bd2 or white played knight bd2 and then castles. And now we know. Yeah, this is where she played knight a6, which seems just bad. But that's why she played knight a6, so that if white plays c4, she can hop her knight in here. And if white doesn't play c4, then black doesn't have a lot to worry about. So it makes some sense for that reason. Yeah, I thought that immediately, but if they play c4, are they going to take and open up the c file or, or push on in? Either one is possible. Probably take. And then if this pawn takes, not only do we have rook c1, we have bishop b5 check, which is very yeah. annoying. Maybe she'll castle first. Although she's not going to castle. Which no, castle? No, 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 no. Well, she's definitely going to castle king side. King side yeah. After c4, knight b4 takes, you can take with the knight. Problem is knight c4 is is very strong. But it's it's black's move in this position. So she'll probably play knight e7, and she played knight e7 very quickly. And then castle. Yeah. And then, then her knight is defending this pawn too. This is the position Dina wants. It's a Karo Khan, it's blocked. Both sides are doing what they want to do, and the engine says white is slightly better. This is this is the kind of position you're looking for if you play the Carol Khan. It's unfortunate. But. I'm not sure if you need a FIDE rating to play in the open tournament. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. Every tournament's different. So it's up to the regulations of the tournament. This one I don't know. She probably doesn't want to play C5 because it's not her turn. And if she played it last move, Bishop B5 check is probably annoying. If black wants to play c5, she should castle first and then play c5. The question is, will black play c5 or will white play c4 first? Or will neither player play either move ever? Then it's not clear what they'll do. <clears throat> but black would like to castle and play bishop h7 and knight f5 and then c5 and put pressure on white center here. Typically, lower-rated players at this level are not as um, patient as higher-rated players. And you really need patience in this position. If white goes totally nuts, that's probably going to be bad. And lower-rated players don't like to do nothing. They like to do something. 
higher rated players typically like to do nothing and do it well. Hey, chess golfer in Germany. Yeah, so white can play rook, either rook to c1 to play c4, or white can play queen a3 and b4 and gain space on the queen side that way. So two main ideas are white plays for b4 or white plays for c4. And often white plays knight h4 and gets the two bishops, which is not possible here because the bishop can go back. But he could still play knight h4, bishop h7, then play f4 and try to play for f5, advance on the king's side. Very risky strategy, but one that he's considering. Typically when the center is blocked like this, you want to play on the flank. So knight h4, f4 looks like a reasonable idea. c4 or queen a3, b4 seems reasonable. And black wants to castle and play his knight, her knight to f5 or play c5. This is still a little janky over here. Not really well placed. Are we Dana's parents? No. <clears throat> Typically, the names Ben Feingold and Karen Boyd are related to somebody named Dina Belenkaya. Very rare, very, very common. <laughs> so good question. It's time for Dina's opponent to earn his rating. They don't look that old, says Coffee. Mm. Well, I appreciate that. I could very easily by age be Dina's mother. I, I, I have a child who's older than Dina. <laughs> so it, it you know age wise, you know, could could have been true. Sorry about the technical difficulties earlier. I, I don't know what the problem was. We'll never know unless we know. The opponent is from Canada. And on Dina's stream, his mom is watching the stream, or supposedly anyway, because I can't prove it. Seems likely. That's right, we're Dana's chess parents. It's not Reed Boyd, it's Boyd Reed. Boyd is his first name. You talking about the US chess guy? Yeah, he said Reed Boyd. Close. Karen is distantly related to oil can Boyd. Very distant. Boyd Reed always seems a little humorless. Correct. <laughs> I think he made a joke one time in an email and I was shocked. Mm hmm. Dina's mother is a strong player and chess trainer, right? Says Alcathus. I don't know, actually. You see they have Weenie Beard Guy back. I don't know who that is.
I haven't seen Yves Anshuk walking around. Maybe that's because he's on a... Oh, there he is, as I said it. Because he was on a lower board. He has to walk around a lot. That's important. That's him right there? Uh-huh. The older guy? Mm-hmm. I didn't even recognize him. I don't know who's older, me or Ivanchuk. It's about the same. I think Ivanchuk's like a year older than me. Three hundred bits. When you had Dina, was it a home birth or hospital birth? Also, was Ben present? Yay! Thank you, Finn Von Gogh, for the three hundred bits. That's all correct. <laughs> he wants to know if I had a home birth or hospital birth with Dina, and if you were there. Finn Von Gogh, coming with the good questions. It's still better than most of the questions. Nicholson's first name is Devin. It's Ivanchuk again. Looks like he played knight h4, so he does want to play f4, as I posited earlier. She has to play bishop h7, so I'll just play it. I don't know why I should wait for her. Did my Benoni lecture come out already? I don't know. Not to my knowledge. Wait, where are you reading? Um, the chat. Oh, I see it. Yeah, E.K. How it should be out in the next day or two. Sometimes it takes me a couple of days to upload all the files to the editor. Both of the Botez sisters are gaining rating points this tournament. That's good. Oh yeah, she did play Bishop H7. I played it on another board I'm looking at. Uh, the stream's better when there's video. What is the rating of the opponent chat? It says quad. He's uh oh, what eighteen twenty two. Eighteen twenty two. I was about to say, I've never seen Dina at the board so much. Then she walked up, then she left. <laughs> so far, even though we've played an hour and 20 minutes, nothing has been traded. All 32 pieces are still on the board. The board's getting crowded. People are confirming that Dina's mom is a very good chess trainer, says Jack Gleason. I thought you were joking that she trained Anish Geary. She really did? Yeah, I think I've heard that. Oh, nice.
yeah, if you play the Carol Khan, which Dina does often, these are the kinds of positions you accept. White has more space, but both sides have winning chances, and it's not easy to figure out what you should be doing. So typically, these are good positions for the better player, whether you're white or black. And he did play f4. The strong engine does not approve of knight h4 and f4. It says that black castles and is completely equal. f5 isn't really a threat because I have a lot of guys on f5. And now white center is somewhat weakened by the move f4 because of this diagonal. We can play c5 and put pressure on d4, and then we can... Um, either play knight f5 later or knight c6. Occasionally, black can insanely sacrifice a pawn with g5 and open up the g and h files to white's king. That would be interesting if Dina plays g5 and then castles queenside and rook g8, but that's more for one minute chess than a slow game. But the, the strong engine says that knight h4, f4, has given away all of white's advantage, and that f5 isn't a serious threat. Although, if I had the black pieces, I would be very worried about g4, f5. The engine is not worried about g4, f5. Let's just make some moves to see, like, castles is the best move, and we're going to play g4 because that's the most testing. Then the engine says c5, f5. And then the game would be stopped by the arbiters because it's too exciting. Now, Dina's knight on a6 makes sense. She can take and play knight b4. Yeah, this is a very complex position. White could run over black or white's position could fall apart. I wouldn't be surprised if something like this actually happens. Let's see if Dina's made a move. Yeah, she castled. Okay, so this is the, the current board position. So I'm hoping for G4 because that's the most exciting. And that goes in with his knight h4 f4 plan if he's not going to play f5 why did he play knight h4 f4 so it makes sense to me that white would play g4 f5 here that seems consistent with the way he's playing and he did play g4 i was rated 1800 before this guy was born so i know how 1800 thinks the strong engine says c5 is the best move rook fc8 rook ac8 with the idea of c5 since you can play c5 now. There's no reason to prepare it with a rook on c8. Might as well just play c5. And then black wants to take and play knight b4. And then I take back all the egregious things I said about knight a6. And after knight to b4, if white hasn't played f5, you know, c2 square is sort of tender. Knight c2 would be interesting, or bishop c2, or queen c2. And the knight can't be dislodged from b4. It's a nice square in white's position. And neither player is at the board. Black could consider f5, but that's not a move I would consider. 
Black's play is generally on the queen side. C5 takes, knight b4, rook c8, Papa John's. So this is the current board position. He yes. did he did go g4 uh -huh. g4. Okay. Yeah. I was reading chat so I got confused. Uh -huh. Reading chat would confuse most people. Did um did anybody get a GM norm or has chances for a GM norm? I thought that one of the women needed to win her last round, but it wasn't Leia, it was somebody else. What's the result of the game if neither player ever comes back to the board? So people are questioning whether she should have castled. On Definitely castles was correct. On the king, yeah. So, and then now it says black's slightly better, so I didn't mm -hmm. know what yeah, changed. The, the, the good engine says it's equal. Oh, the, it does. the good engine is not impressed with knight h4, f4, g4 as a plan for white. I think it wanted to play on the queen side with either queen a3, b4, or c4. Mm -hmm. But this is a typical idea also. You know, white, white can run over black if uh, black isn't careful. Still, nothing has been traded. Today's Thursday. Dean has been gone quite a long time. So it doesn't look like the engine is worried about the king side at this point because all the suggested moves from the queen side. Uh huh. So that means, like for me, this is always scary in a game mm -hmm. when the pawns come, but it's not a concern. It is a concern, but the engine just calculates and is not concerned. Thank you for the sub, Homo Prism. Hooray! Man, I got a lot of sinus stuff. I don't feel the greatest. Mm hmm. The G4 pawn looks adventurous. The spectators are more interested in the game than the players. Right. <laughs> They want their moment of fame. Look at me. <laughs> That's Salamova right there. That's what I was going to say. That other one was not. Is Dana coming back with T? <clears throat> Maybe with Mr. T. It's Yvonne Chuck. Oh, I guess that's old. 
Yeah, Anamaya is only an FM, but she's 2200 ELO. She would be able to gain some title eventually. I think I saw her tweet that she's she is going to be trying to whatever the next title is. I guess I am mm -hmm. or WGM. So I think she is trying to get another title. Dina has a good chest face. Why is the table empty? Says chat. This is this is chess at the highest level. Nobody's ever there. <laughs> you know, they like to walk around, get their blood flowing. They're good enough, or at least Dina is, to visualize the board when she's walking around so she can still think about it. She's back. Here comes the photographer. Dina's professional getting her photo taken. Scorpion, she's help, putting her hand in front of the lens like that helps helps it focus, I believe. So she's not she's not saying no, even though that is the gesture for no, Oof. no. <laughs> That's not what she's doing. Mr. T pities the foo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is he still alive? Mm -hmm. Still making commercials too. Oh, he is? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> it's Dankle. Hey, Dankle. Hey, Dankle. Dankle. <laughs> I'd love to play Reykjavik one day. Mm-hmm. Kind of a pricey trip. <laughs> hey, I have somebody from the spaces wanting to stake me mm -hmm. in a multiple day event. Mm -hmm. He staked some other people before. Um, actually, a few people. So I'm not sure about it. Is it online or in person? In person. Mm -hmm. And so... How does that work if they pay the whole, I guess it can work any way you want it to. Mm -hmm. If he pays the whole entry fee mm -hmm. to a multiple day event, what percentage? It's up to you and the, the guy okay. staking you. Because I think he said half. Is that fair? It's not fair to him. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> he's paying the whole entry fee. Right. He's just doing it because be nice. he wants to do it, not because yeah. he's trying to make money. Right. Well, that's what he said because I, I replied to him. I said, well, I don't know. I'm not the greatest poker player. I'm studying to mm -hmm. be better. But where's the tournament at? He didn't have a specific one. Mm. He, I had said on the spaces that I was going to be doing this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. So he was wanting it. He's already. Yeah, because in May we're going to uh, 
uh, Cherokee. Right. I told him about that one. So, okay, maybe I'll do it. He's, he staked a few people. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and I don't think he won any money. <laughs> so, obviously, that's not his mm -hmm. purpose. I just feel a little funny. I don't want to let people down that they're staking me. You're not letting them down because they're staking you. So, they have action. And that's they're, fun they're going, for them? going for action. Okay. So you got to have action. That's what Chase told, told me. He said it doesn't have anything to do at all with how good you are. And he told me I should get staked too. <laughs> Aviv saw an interview with a guy who used to play high stakes and he lost all his money and he plays like one, two. Mm -hmm. And some interviewer said, how do you, how do you play one, two after playing for you know hundreds of thousands? And he said, action is action. <laughs> yeah, guys, I was just talking about somebody wants to stake me in the poker tournament. And, uh, so maybe I'll do that. Yeah, especially if I go to Florida, which I still don't know if mm -hmm. that's going to work out. But <clears throat> he could um, help out with one of the more expensive buy-ins. And, like, even if it's the main event, I mean, that would be hugely helpful. Mm -hmm. So I might have to pursue it. C5 is the best move. Black needs to play on the queen side and get counterplay. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're playing in a practical game, not using engines... You're very worried about F5 and such. So Rage says, I've heard previous stream that Karen plays poker. What's the average buy-in, please? You know, I don't have an average buy-in. I play online. Well, I, online I do. Online I play $11 and $16 buy-ins, which is probably equivalent to a 400 or 600 buy-in in person with regards to the difficulty and level of the players. But I don't play in person very often, but when I do, uh, you know, it's 400, 600, or 1,000 usually, sometimes more. In person is very expensive to play poker, but the prizes are bigger. <clears throat> and I have somebody that wants to stake me and since I'm still new and learning. Won't you just take the stake money and gamble it all away and roulette and slots? And stuff? <laughs> yeah. I'm new and learning, but you know, I could bank I could bank a tournament. I think the guy likes to stake people and he doesn't really care that I'm not great. So I think I think I'll do it. If you were what move would you play? C5. C5, yeah. Um, Seems pretty yeah, obvious. Yeah, she played C5. Um, Danny Wrench mentioned that I might do candidates coverage. So, maybe. Maybe what? Somebody asked if I'm going to do candidates coverage. Oh. <clears throat> but he hasn't gotten back to me. He's busy. Yeah, and then you're going to be going to the candidates mm -hmm. for a few days with your um, buddies. Good old Nerditsky. Scorpion wants to know if you're coming to the National Open. Possibly. It, it seems very likely. I'll be doing my usual lecture, simul, chess camp kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Even though it's my favorite tournament, well, maybe t slightly favorite over World Open, I'm not going to be able to do it because I've got to watch the dogs and we're going to Vegas two weeks after that for the World Series of Poker. So it's too much travel. 
So I'm not going to get to do the National Open this year. It's a great tournament, though, for anybody that can get there. Go, Dina. We've been playing an hour and 40 minutes, and all the pieces and pawns are still on the board. Your friend Isan is coming. GM Ishan, I don't know GM. I know GM Elshan. Yeah, that's what he means. Oh, it's, a type, type. it's his Marty friend, Marty. but he doesn't know his name. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got more dia body. <clears throat> Nobody cares for me. <laughs> Am I working on my poker openings? I'm working on poker. Right now, I'm just... As soon as I'm able, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to watch a video. Not Elshon. Magami. On poker. Oh, he wasn't talking about Elshon. Mm -hmm. Isan, I don't know how to say it. Isan Magami. 13-time Iranian champ. Very suspicious. Well, that's cool. Isn't Elshon from Iran? Uh-huh. John says, wait, Dina is not from Israel. Let's see, that's wrong. And second of all, you misspelled Israel. Terrible. That's a typo. <laughs> not a typo. He can't spell Israel. Most people can't spell it correctly, so they spell it wrong. Anyway, he's banned. Dina represents Israel in, you know, chess. I am doing a simul. That is correct. That'll be on uh, Thursday, the day before the National Open starts. It'll be in the afternoon. It'll start about 2 p.m. Domina says, Kay, where did you get that poker hoodie you wore yesterday? I think I wore it a couple of days ago, but... I got it um, at the World Series of Poker last summer in the merch shop. And I saw some guy with the same hoodie on in Tulsa. Mm hmm Rio? No. So the, the strong engine says F5 is the only move. Otherwise, black has a nice advantage. Strong engine says after F5, it's about equal. Otherwise, black is better. I mean, F5 is the normal move. The Rio is now independent of, of uh, Caesars, and they've revamped the hotel and made it better because it's impossible to not make it better. It was so bad. I just thought they would tear down the Rio, but they're actually trying to make it a reasonable hotel, although trying is the first step to failure. But they've like added some restaurants and they've made it nicer in the casino and they've lowered their prices and they're trying to get, they have their own rewards system now. But their reputation has been so bad for so long that I don't know if they can get it back. How's the volcano situation in Iceland? I haven't heard about it lately. San Diego has great poker. Ben is the best man. Is Anna Kramling here as well? Yeah, Anna's here. How will Nepo do in the candidates this year, says Jack Gleason. I'll, I'll tell you after the tournament. <laughs> oh, 
I've got to review who all's in it and decide who I'm for. Probably Fabi. I can tell you who's in it. Fabi, Nakamura, Pragnananda, Vidit. Um, I think Arjun Iragasi, but I could be wrong about that. Um, Nepo, Abasov, and I feel like I'm missing one person, unless I already named eight people. Abasov? Mm -hmm. I don't even know anything about him at all. Yeah, like everybody else. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm for Fabi or, or Nakamura. Mm -hmm. One of those guys. America. America. <laughs> You're wanting to know the female with the white pullover, who I don't see anymore, if that's Atusa. Atusa is playing in the tournament. Yeah, I didn't see her, but is that the one that was sitting like over there? That's that who like... they're talking about. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's Atusa. Well, when she comes back, I'll take a look. That's pretty good spotting of people, if so. And he did play F5. Stop the game, it's too exciting. So I'm guessing that she will likely play uh, C takes D4, C takes D4, Knight B4. That seems like the most likely way of playing. Another way she can play is to take on d4, take on d4, then play knight c6, attacking the d-pawn. Or she can play knight c6 immediately, attacking the d-pawn. One advantage of playing knight c6 at some point is f6 doesn't attack the knight. Mm -hmm. Disadvantage of playing knight c6 is it takes pressure off of the f5-pawn which may not matter because we don't want to take on F5 anyway and help White. So I, I, I would guess CD or Knight C6 is the next move. I hate everybody in the chat. Go chat. Still no trades. It's funny, like, if white leaves the pawn on F5, how does one keep attacking? However, if white moves the pawn on f5 by either taking or playing f6, then my bishop is very good on this diagonal, and the knight will be able to go to g6 or c6. And this queen is not and will not participate in the attack of the black king, so that makes it hard for white to get a big attack, because black has these three pieces next to her king. This queen can't, can't get over there. I mean, it could play queen here, queen here, queen here, and even then it's not, it still takes a couple more moves. And whilst white is doing that, d4 is very weak, and c2 can be, I can play knight b4, and queen c2, and knight c2, and knight c6, and knight d4. Black has a lot of counterplay on the queen side. So it looks nice that white's pawn is on f5, because it blocks the bishop, and it has all this great space. But if white doesn't move the pawn on f5, how does white continue attacking? I don't know, because g5 seems to just lose the f pawn. But it's very scary in a tournament game if you're black, because your opponent's getting all up in your grill. For some reason, the chat wants to open up its own king with f6 and g5. 
<laughs> yeah, that people who suggest moves like that need to donate more and suggest chess moves less. Yeah, black definitely not going to move any, any of these pawns. These pawns are protecting black's king. I think she played knight c6, but I'm not sure. Can somebody verify she played knight c6? Ben is too casual. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, now f6 doesn't attack the knight on e7, so that helps black, and black is attacking the d4 pawn now. Yay. Thank you for the sub, Zola Dan, on Dana's channel. Thank you so much. LOL, Ben catching strays left and right, says Domina Juanita. He's used to it. The, the engine says the obvious move, knight df3, is the best move. Defending the d-pawn. Seems like a pretty obvious move. Is Ivanchuk the oldest there? Ridiculous question. Ivanchuk's in his like mid 50s. I'm sure there's 20 or 30 players older than him in the tournament. I hope you're ashamed for your question. The spectators have rights. You should donate more. That's correct. You got to do what you're good at. After dissing the chat for suggesting G5 and F6, which I was right to do, that good engine says after knight DF3, black should play F6. But that would be shocking because white can take here and the d pawn's hanging. That seems suicidal. Uh -huh. I guess if you take on e6, I can throw in c4 and then take on e5. So it's less suicidal than expected. This could break the world's record for the longest number of hours played in a game with no captures. It's funny, one time Super GMs were doing commentary on an Anand game, mm -hmm. and the Super GM said, well, the engine says this is the best move, but I guarantee that won't be played, some crazy looking move, and then Anand played it. <laughs> yeah. yeah he sure. showed that guy. When I was growing up and, you know, like a teenager and such, it was very common. Thanks, Sven Beingold. It was very common that uh, lower rated players in Swiss tournaments were trying to draw higher rated players and offering them a draw and trading everything and offering several draws and so forth. That was very common. Nowadays, when I look at these big open tournaments, lower rated players are trying to win and like you can see the way white is playing white's trying to play thematically and 
advance on the king's side and play good chess and play good opening and try to win the game. And that's the way chess should be played. It shouldn't be one side's playing for a win, the other side wants a draw. But unfortunately, at the lower levels, that's very common. And often, when a lower rated player gets an excellent position, like plus one, plus two, against a higher rated player, they offer a draw or agree to a draw because that was their goal, was to draw a better player. Frankly, terrible. But that's less common nowadays. People playing for a win, trying to play good chess, that makes it better for the spectators. Also, it's nice to win. Like you're playing somebody two, three, four hundred points higher than you, beating them is good. Okay, and he played knight df3, which is the best move. I'm guessing it's going to say like high 90s. Oh, it just says, it says mid 90s. 92.7 for white, 94.1 for black. Still pretty good. Kramnik approved. Uh, let's see, where am I? F4. Here's, here's where I am. Still no trades. So the good engine says black should either take on d4, play f6, or queen d8. I guess queen d8 puts pressure on the h4 knight, and it makes the knight on f3 somewhat overworked because we can continue taking on d4 forever, and when white plays knight takes, we can take the knight. So queen d8 not only puts pressure on the knight, which makes this knight possibly overworked, it also defends the g5 square, because white might be interested in playing g5, g6. So taking f6 and queen d8 are all reasonable according to the engine. It's amazing to me that f6 is the best move, and the second best way of playing is to trade on d4 and then play f6. I don't know if white's threatening g5 or not. Maybe. Good morning, Juan. It's Dina. Looks like she's playing C takes D4 based on her hand movement. Bishop E4 is illegal. Bishops can't jump over pawns. Never mind, I had the wrong position. Correct. You know, I thought Dina was going to make a move, but there's a photographer there. Maybe she was doing the thing again. No, she was making a move. I was right. Okay, she played CD. Now, white must take with the pawn. Taking with a piece is terrible. And black has a big advantage because black has C5. Tax the queen. Knight can go to E4. So we finally have our first trade two hours into the game. And white must play c takes d4, which seems very obvious. It seems very obvious, and then white will do something else. If you play the Karo Khan, you can't be worried about these positions. This is what happens.
Go Fen Beingold, 200 bits and a poker story. Yay, Karen, I got staked once, turned $200 into 3000 at Pot Limit Omaha. Hello. I hit the wheel on my first hand and won the whole shebang. Well, maybe I am going to get staked. Stay tuned. So from a human perspective, like knight A to B4 seems like a logical move. Um, also possible is knight C to B4, just so we open the C file. Um, but yeah, the, the engine really wants to play F6. It seems very dangerous. But your one hand was a large pot, Finbine Gold? Took a few hands to get to 3K. <clears throat> so the strong engine says that the chats F6 and G5 are the best moves. The moves I would never play. And that Knight A, B4 is the third best move. Dina plays the Carol Khan all the time, so she understands the ideas better than I do. I play it occasionally. Oh, she already played knight AB4, which is what I would have played. I'm not sure if that's good or not. But that's why she played knight A6. The knight's obviously better on B4 than, than on A6. Also, what the engine says doesn't really matter much. Two humans are playing. Position is super complex. So, for reasons nobody will ever understand, but I'll explain them. By far the best move for white, by far, is king h1. That gets off of this diagonal and it prepares white to play rook g1 and g5, etc. The engine says king h1 gives white a nice advantage. Any other move is just equal. But king h1 is a great move, it says. That seems hard to believe that white would play that. It's a lot easier to play the best moves when you have the engine helping you. They're on move 18 and it seems like Dina has a big time disadvantage. Hey, I don't want to say this out loud, but I got this email right here. Uh huh. Just an FYI. Uh huh. Okay. The Ben bot is coming out in, on Monday. Yeah, very exciting. Dina's acting like she's not worried, and she gets up and leaves. She's like, whatever. <laughs> Big money, no whammy, stop. $50 from Anonymous. Yay. Yay. Thanks, Thank Anonymous. You. Thank you, Anonymous. You're the Anonymous assistant. <laughs> In Philadelphia, that donation was worth 50 bucks. Yeah. Anonymous always coming through, usually sponsoring lectures. Yeah. Typically, people don't have ratings of 1800 because they play moves like King H1. That's, that's more of a Magnus Carlsen move than an 1800 move. Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking she would have to do that eventually to get the rooks on the G file. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, you know, know it was the best move now. But. So I, don't, I guess I don't think it's that complicated. Mm -hmm. King's got to get out of the way.
Yeah, he played Rook A C one. Yeah, that's that's more of an eighteen hundred move. Mm-hmm. Rook, Rook's better on C one than it is on A one. The long run, Black wants to trade pieces since White has an initiative against Black's king. So in the long run, we're going to see some Rook trades on the C file, and that's going to help Black. But there's nothing wrong with Rook A C one. It's just not the most incisive. But I wasn't expecting the most incisive even though the confirmation biased people were. If you can call them people. Now the engine wants black to play queen e7, which makes a lot of sense because the knight's pinned and the queen keeps an eye on the king side. And after queen e7, she may be worried about f6, which I would be super worried about, but the engine is not. The other move is queen d8, Queen d8 may be played instead of queen e7, just so f6 doesn't attack the queen. Problem with f6 is it gives black's bishop this, you know, great diagonal. Here, 2 4, the bishop is blocked pretty badly by the pawn. It's hard for white to checkmate black because white's queen is never going to participate in the attack of the black king. And white has to spend a lot of energy defending the d pawn, which is can't be defended by a pawn. And the knight on h4 can't move anywhere forward. So even though white position looks good, black has lots of you know good things about her position. The knight is ensconced on b4, the d pawn is weak, black has a very solid position, etc. The important thing is that nobody is at the board. Knight takes e5, loses the queen, and it also hangs a piece to knight takes. Knight takes e5 is not a threat and never will be because white just takes on e5. So basically you're banned. Bishop f2 is possible. All legal moves are possible. I don't like the fact that Dean is never at the board. Actually, that fact is fine, but I don't like the fact that she has a big time disadvantage and she's never at the board. Right, I don't understand why you keep saying knight takes e5 as a threat when it hangs a knight. I don't know. You keep saying knight takes e5. It's... You can't play knight takes e5. I can take, or I can take this way. It's defended twice. So this is never a threat, and never will be, and you should be banned for suggesting it. Wait, who's suggesting it? Yeah, I don't know. Somebody in the chat. <clears throat> I don't look at their name. I just read the chat. Anyway, the chat is banned. Very exciting position. That guy who's watching on the left here looks like Hans Niemann in a few years. Apparently, she's banned from her board. <laughs> That's funny. It does kind of look like... <laughs> that does look like Hans <laughs> in a few years. That's funny. I haven't gotten any Hans newsletters lately. Terrible. What? He's not sent out the newsletters? Either um, 
is going into spam or <laughs> or he hadn't been doing them. And he's been vlogging. He and uh, Kramnik should team up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Kramnik likes social media. <laughs> That's funny. First American world champion, Hans Neiman. <laughs> she is quite literally wasting her time. Now, what does that mean, Mr. Puffy? Wait, Hans has a newsletter, says Diddy. Yeah, he, um... He started some kind of blog slash vlog on Substack, I guess. And then you register there and then you get a newsletter with links to these things, I guess. And then if you pay, which I don't, you get extra content. So I just haven't gotten a newsletter lately from Hans. So I'm not sure what that means. A lot of times I was too busy and I was deleting it, but I did look, read a couple of them. Just like anything, when it's new, it's fun to do. So I got a bunch of newsletters and emails from Hans early on, and now it's just gone silent. <laughs> Diddy says, can't I just watch the news to see what's going on in Hans' life? Yeah. If you just get on Twitter, you, he tweets a good amount. You, you should go eat if you're starving. But you know, he's documenting his road to world champion. Mm -hmm. So I guess he has a YouTube channel. I haven't really looked. Go Hans. I, you know, it'd be exciting if he became world champion. And she played day. Queen D8. That seems more human than queen e7 because you don't want f6 to hit your queen mm -hmm. did the engine have a preference over the two queen so moves it, it, likes, it says they're about the same oh Dean is yawning yeah the strong engine just says like it's an equal position it doesn't have a, a, a favorite move for white Yeah, I think Dina likes her position because this is this is nice here. Knight on b4 is good. The pawn on d4 is under pressure. The queen on d8 is putting pressure on the knight on h4. So at some point, it may be possible to, <clears throat> to play knight takes d4. And this knight's overworked. So like, the, the engines are recommending rook c to d1, defending the d-pawn which seems like an odd move to make after playing rook ac1 mm -hmm. to play such a defensive move and give up the c file. Also, black is threatening, knight takes e5. And I guess it's bad to move the other rook to protect the pawn. You'd like your rook on the f file yeah. since you're advancing on the f yeah, file. That's gonna open. You, you prefer that. That's what I was thinking. Jim Jonathan Ralston says in his book you should get up only at the time control once you make time control and get a drink and some chocolate as a reward for sitting there for 39 moves. I, I hardly ever get up <laughs> mm -hmm. when I play. I mean, I do, if it goes long, get up towards the end and move around. 
or if I have to go to the bathroom, but in general, I do not get up. This is move 19. Both sides have made 19 moves. That's correct, DT Greg. Greetings from Athens Band, says Sagnik. Mm hmm. Does he mean Greece or Georgia? Nobody knows. Yeah, Dana got pared down. There's 400 players in this tournament, and Dina's in the top 100, so she's going to get pared down more than paired up, unless she has tons of points. Sleep. How many points does she have, Neha? I believe five out of eight. Uh huh. Yeah, five out of eight. So if she wins today, that's a pretty good tournament. Yeah, it's good to win the last two rounds. Go, Dana. <clears throat> what time is it in the U.S.? Well, it's 9.17 in East Coast time. That's where we are. <clears throat> West Coast, three hours behind us. 617. You think the car con is boring? Why can't why is the chat cut off here? It's kind of annoying. Is it the bottom? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I was just gonna say I haven't seen a lot of Ivanchuk lately. Then Ivanchuk walked into the screen. <laughs> Yeah, White doesn't know what to do because White's basically done everything that he wants to do and doesn't know how to proceed. So. Alexandra's heading for a draw, opposite colored bishop and pawn. Ending, I guess. Do players ask you to be their second nowadays? They do not. Archer has a math tournament tonight. Mm -hmm. So ask Chris about it. He didn't remember. <laughs> GM Daniel Fernandez just walked by the cam. Now who's that? Let's see. Okay. He's a British GM. Mm. I used to teach an IM named Daniel Fernandez in the U.S., but he quit chess a long time ago. 
Andrea is down on time, but has recovered parity from a bad spot earlier. Mm-hmm. Hey, Puika, how's it going? You forgot about Dana? <laughs> Why is Dana playing under the Israel flag? Yeah, I don't know of a story behind that. Is she from Russia originally? Mm -hmm. I don't know how long she's been playing under the flag. I don't know if that happened during the Ukrainian-Russian war or if this was something that predates that. Past pawn, yeah, I think exclam cameo will explain. Still doing cameo. Word up. Past pawn wants to know, are you still doing cameo? Yeah, I just answered that. Oh, sorry. When I'm reading the chat, I don't want to task very well, so I can't hear you. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too, and I even yeah. already had cereal. I'm hungry three. Yeah, I haven't had anything to eat. You're working from home today, Puika. Oh, she <clears throat> switched federations in 2021 or 2022. Deparnu. So you imagine it has to do with the war. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but. It, She's never said. Did you watch Alice versus Crush yesterday? I see the results, but I don't watch live. Who won? Lee won, and then they play again today. Mm. So on the men's side, Laronium won the tournament. On the women's side, it's either going to be Alice, Lee, or Crush. Wait, which tournament? America's Cup. Oh, America's Cup. It's a knockout tournament. Oh, that's pretty good for Lee. <laughs> that's funny. Ivanchuk's still going along with the Botez Adidas thing. Yeah, he did kind of look like he was doing that. What's the difference between poker discipline and chess discipline? I don't know. You have to have discipline in a lot of different ways. Discipline to study, discipline in your game itself. Not not to make a quick move or a quick decision. Very long think by her opponent. He's been thinking almost 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay here till 10, and then I'm going to go up. Mm -hmm. I've got to do some things before my group starts. It's Charlotte Chess Center. Good morning, Charlotte Chess Center. Good morning, Charlotte. How's it going? I got a sneeze. Excuse me. Mm. I got a sneeze. <coughs> Bless you. Yeah, I'm getting a cold. Darn. I hope this game ends before 11 so I can take a nap before my lesson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Dina's catching up on time.
do you use chess face and poker? I don't know what that means exactly. I just, you know, I've got one face. Is S6 good for white? The engine does not like F6. F6 is a very committal decision because it unleashes the latent potential of the bishop on H7. But it doesn't mean he won't play it. F6 is interesting. Mm -hmm. If he plays F6 and black just still continues to ignore, or you're saying black plays... Who are you saying? Yeah, if, if white plays f6, um, I don't know what I would do. Resign. It says f6, gf6 is virtually winning for black. Problem is, if you, if you play bishop h6, you're hanging your pawn on d4. Your center is just collapsing. You're losing everything in the center. Knight takes d4. So f6 is just bad. But, you know, it's interesting. An attractive looking move. Whoops. Oh, I see. I had questions, but I figured it out. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I was thinking, like, if they took on h6, they're attacking your rope, but then you're attacking your queen. Mm hmm. You got all these checks. Yeah, you don't mind sacrificing the exchange if you win all these pawns. Right. Bishop is active. Bishop's on d4. Knight's here. Going to refresh so the clock times are more accurate. Thank you for the sub. Oh, actually, that's not a sub. It says Red Scorpion has is on a watch streak. Three stream streak. I don't think the clock times are accurate. Yeah. Those tend to get off with chess.com. You're streaking. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you know, I shouldn't be arguing with each other. Just sit back and enjoy the chess here. Guys. Yeah, he's been thinking over 15 minutes because the, the chess.com is now caught up to the to this mm. so he's been thinking over 15 minutes here it says they're both playing in the 92s Yeah, usually when you're thinking this long, you just don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a two-sub in the background there. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, you get them, Sente. Yeah, let's just, you know, don't bring everybody down with your petty arguing, guys. Petty arguing on the internet? <laughs> So when, when I was playing poker, we, we were just playing poker in Tulsa, as some of you guys know, and you know the argument that broke out when you were sitting off to the side and we had to call the floor? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, they were just squabbling, and it was bringing the whole mood of the table down. Mm -hmm. And the guy in the nine, number nine seat, he was the first to break, and they all knew each other. Mm -hmm. There were like two people, me and somebody else, that were – didn't know anybody, but they called they called him out, called one of the guys out, and the floor came. And then after the guy withdrew from the tournament, mm -hmm. the guy that was left wanted to complain about it, and people just shut him down. Mm -hmm. They said, we do not want to hear about it at all. Move on. They all knew each other, and he, and he listened to them. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I'm talking about a... An argument that broke out at my poker table last weekend. Yeah, Donkel, no, you guys are fine in the It's Been and Karen channel. You know, it was a minor little squabble. They got a little time out. You know, that's one thing is that people have to understand that is even if you're justified in being annoyed and popping back, just the whole exchange, sometimes it can be entertaining, but sometimes it can bring the mood down and other people get mad because they're not wanting to hear about the pettiness. So it just depends. That's all. Not the end of the world. Karen played several events, and she cashed in the women's event. She came in 11th. Yeah, and I, I bubbled the one-day ring event. I could have cashed very easily because I was three away, and I knew that, but um, I decided to try to chip it up, chip it up, and I went all in with Jax in the small blind, and big blind had ace-queen off, flopped an ace, GG. That was it. It's the longest think of the tournament. But I, I made the right play. I didn't care about men cash in that tournament. I was trying to chip it up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Buck Mason. The bubble is a great place to play grass because a lot of times people just fold and you can scoop up the blinds. And I just wasn't going to fold Jack, Jack, you know, Jack's in the small blind. That's a a good jam, although I think this, I think this solver actually preferred a limp, mm -hmm. limp shove, but a limp shove it still would have been the same result because he wasn't going to fold that hand. I guess I could have folded after the flop, so maybe it would have been different. Everybody I talked to said they would have jammed in that spot. Mm-hmm. I didn't cash in that one because I busted out three away. But um, if I had to do it over again, I would do the same thing. I get tired of just men cashing. You know, I want to go a little bit deeper. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Buck Mason. Everybody I talked to said they would have played it the way I played it. I didn't. I only had 14 bigs, so... There's not a lot of play with 14 bigs. I mean, I definitely, I guess I could have limped in. And he moved. I can't believe it. Queen D1, always retreat. Trying to get the queen yeah, that's over That's a very bad move. Yeah, remember when I said knight takes e5 will never happen? Now that queen d8 was played, putting pressure on the knight, and queen d1 was played, undefending the bishop on e3, 
now you now you can you can play knight takes e5 at some point so for reasons i don't understand the the engine wants to play e takes f5 before taking on e5 but i'm not sure why Okay, I'll take on e5 and see why that's a blunder, because I don't know why. Knight e5. Oh, because you play knight d7. And you fork here. Uh. That's good reason. But the strong engine is saying black has a big advantage after ef and a small advantage after f6. Don't really see what the difference is. So what's the difference here? Oh, I can I can play rook e eight. Oh no, I can play queen e seven. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and that's winning for black. Okay. So you should play knight to f5, I guess. For some reason, f6 is just really strong for black. I mean, we are threatening to take and win, so that, it's a big threat. e6 just seems like it loses the pawn. Yeah, rook e8 and I take it. Can't defend it. Cobra Madre is still claiming Nicholson is her son. So maybe that was true. I thought it was a joke. No, I thought they were serious. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> nice looking young man, Cobra. So Queen D1 is an engine mistake because of E takes F5. E takes F5 is a very difficult move to play. And the idea is you want to play knight e5, but it turns out that knight d7 is good for white. However, if you take on f5 first and they take with the g pawn, now knight d7 is not good for white because queen e7 is available attacking the bishop and the knight, and now black is winning. So white should play knight takes f5, and after f6, black has an excellent position threatening to take on e5. E6 just loses the E pawn. So we're forced to do this. And then taking either one is good for black. And yeah, then white's you know, pawns that were on E5 and F5 are now gone. Bishop needs some defense. This knight is getting attacked. D pawn is weak. The knight on B4 is good. And white doesn't really have an initiative on the king side anymore. That's all very complicated because e, e takes f5 really isn't a movie, a movie you look at. Yay. Thank you, D. Burke, for the sub. Also, f6 right away gives black the advantage. So black has two good moves here. He takes f5 and f6. It looks like she always played f6. Right, now she's threatening to take on e5 because mm -hmm. the d pawn is pinned now because the, the, the queen. It's also threatening to play knight takes e5. Okay, so that, that's an excellent move. It says white must play e takes f6, otherwise black is winning. And then after queen takes f6, black is much better. <laughs> YouTubers are saying Dana walks around like a tiger. <laughs> She wants to disturb the lion, Dina Sharkson. Do I read any literature books apart from chess and poker books? I haven't read one lately, but 
I do love fiction, and that was what I studied in school. My favorite fiction book is How to Improve Your Poker by, um, I messed the joke up because I forgot his name, How to Improve Your Poker by Ma Mike Mattiso. <laughs> oh, snap. Hey, he's not a bad player. He's still a good player. Blah. Didn't he win? I think he won a, a bracelet last summer, if I'm not mistaken. Blah. Hey, when is the tag team event? Mm -hmm. How would I know that? We could play it. Blah. <laughs> I mean, the tournament lasts for over two months. We're only there for two weeks. I know. So we can only play in like 20% of the, uh, the events. But uh, tag team, I think, is before we get there. But <clears> I'm not positive. <throat> if, it's, if it's while we're there, if you don't want to play, I'm going to try to find somebody to play. Uh-huh. Yeah, you should play with Sean Deeb. <laughs> yeah, Sean wants to win bracelets. You, you don't want to play with me. Yeah, and his wife plays. They mm -hmm. should play. I think I just saw on the internet where she was playing in some tournament. Mm -hmm. Sean, are you watching this stream right now? If so, say something. <laughs> is, saw... Sean, is Sean awake so early in the morning? No. <laughs> Sean's not up and Sean's not caring about this tournament. What? Here for chess today subscribed. Thanks for supporting the stream. Mm -hmm. Both players have made 20 moves. Dina's F6 intends to show that white's overextended on the king's side. Yeah, thank you for the sub here for chess today. And they and here for chess says thanks for commentating the games. Ben and Dina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, then he corrected it. Ben and Karen. <laughs> That's fine. I knew what you meant. JP says, I don't like her position. Her position is excellent. He says it's a losing position. Her position is better. <laughs> yeah, we have the eval bar to help know who's better. I might not necessarily know either. Black's pieces are all in the correct squares. Queen d1 was a mistake because it undefended the bishop on e5, which made taking on e5 stronger for black because of this pin. The queen was defending the bishop on e3, and now the bishop is loose. The aval bar is the weak engine. The weak engine and the strong engine both say black has a nice advantage. Dina seems very confident in her play and her position. Yeah, Dina plays for Israel, so that is the Israeli flag next to her name. It, he takes f6, was played. And now Dina should take with the queen. Taking with the rook is also acceptable. In fact, now the engine says they're about the same. Mm -hmm. 
one of the points of queen d1 is the knight on f3 was overworked. It was defending d4 and h4 because the queen was on h4. So queen d1 defends the pawn more. That's one of the purposes. Other purpose might be to play queen e1 to g3 and try to attack on the king's side since the queen on b3 isn't helping white's attack on the king's side. Rook takes and queen takes are equally good according to the engine. I think she'll play queen takes. That seems more human than rook takes. <clears throat> no, Jordan, Dana does not usually invite her opponent to for the post-game analysis. Mm. Oh. You've missed nothing. Huh. Ah, she played neither move. She played E takes F5, which is also possible, but the engine considered that third best. Played pretty quickly too. So Dina's idea is if you play FG, then black plays rook E8 with a big advantage because we're putting pressure here and the G4 pawn's attacked. Black, white could easily miss that. White might think after takes, black's going to take back. But rook E8 rook e is really strong, threatening the bishop and threatening to take on G4. Best move by far for white is G5. And after g5, the strong engine says it's equal. If white does anything else, black has a very large advantage. I expect he'll play fg and he won't see rook e8. That's my guess. <clears throat> yeah, this is very complicated. Yeah, G5 was underestimated by Dina. But super sharp position. Very hard to find the right ideas. Unless you're using an engine, then it's easier. So after FG, we play Rook E8, threatening the bishop. Also threatening to take the pawn, which attacks the knight. And the knight's defending the other knight. So white has a lot of issues. But he has to see Rook E8. He might just think king takes G7. And that's probably good for white. So G5 is the only good move, and then white, white's position is okay. So E takes F5 was not, not the best move, but it might work out really well. Yeah, she should have taken that pawn while she could on F6. Second best is to take on G7, rook E8, but that's very good for black. <clears throat> position like this is exactly what Dina's is looking for especially against a low-rated player give him complicated tactical decisions to make and make the guy earn his rating world poker tour jokers wild says world poker tour at the seminole hard rock in april looks like a good game yes jokers wild i'm gonna try to go to that hey do you know if the discounts that we get on Wyndham, maybe there's one down there. Don't we get discounts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Although, I'm the Wyndham guy, and I'm probably not going, so that right. doesn't help you. Oh, you can't do it I don't think me? I can. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't make the reservation in your name and still use my, my account. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you're right. I would think. 
Yeah, because I think the site hotel is pretty expensive. Oh, yeah, I'm not staying there. I'm just not going to go unless there's a, a discount. Okay, so what happened? Nothing. The computer went back to the actual chess.com position. Oh. Uh, oh, because they're behind. It does that sometimes. It just goes there and I have to come back. Amay says, bro, Dina is beautiful. She's a beautiful human. Smart, good chess player. Yeah, he played FG. After rookie eight, he's going to think forever because he doesn't see rookie eight. He didn't see rookie eight. He, he earned his rating. It's not the end of the world, but he just obviously missed rookie eight. Then, then like everything is hanging it's always more obvious to look at the recapture. Yeah. Dino will play rookie eight, so I'll just play it now. I don't want to waste any time. <laughs> yep, and she played it. I played the moves before they actually played the move. Opposite oh of chess.com. Yeah, so he, he didn't see rookie eight, so he's never going to move now. And he, sh he should play knight g2, which isn't easy to find. Now she has all kinds of threats. Taking here, taking here. And if the bishop moves and you take here, you're threatening the knight, which is defending the other knight. So that's why knight g2 is the best move. Fresh Ray likes you. Super fan. He says, I think you're one of the most chill and funny chess commentators. I'm the funniest. Got some wittiness to you. Mm-hmm. Dina's really confident this game. She's playing the complications, and she's very confident about it. The good engine says knight g2 is okay. It says otherwise the game's over. Knight g2 or white resigns. And I don't know if he'll play knight g2 because he obviously didn't see rook e8. And sometimes you choke on your rage. Like you're like, you, the pawn mix move you didn't see at all and it's super tactical and you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then you, then you, you know, then you earn your rating. Knight g2 is a hard move to play because the knight on h4 is attacking f5. And it's, it's, been, it's been protecting the white f5 pawn for a long time. So retreating like this seems very passive and bad. You can't hear well, Cobra? You get a hearing aid. I don't know. Did you check the volume? Mm-hmm. <laughs> These guys are back to arguing again. Mm -hmm. The sound is fine. Hmm. User error. I mean, I'm not real loud, but I'm I'm not as important. I'm not doing the commentary. I'm just asking some questions here and there. So if he doesn't play knight g2, he's losing. If he plays knight g2, he's okay. It's 50-50. It's a hard move to find, but it makes sense because F takes G is like winning a piece. So knight H4, knight G2 gets the knight off of H4. But the fact that he overlooked rook E8, psychologically it's hard to play white now. Because you're like, damn, did I just blunder? And his center's, you know, imploded. You have this nice pawn here, a nice pawn here, and now it's all gone. Mm -hmm. Black still has this nice piece configuration here, putting pressure on d4. Knight's good on b4. My bishop's going to be good. So it's 50-50, he'll play here.
if I was 1800, I would play Bishop takes h6. I was 1800 before he was born. Knight takes f5, I, I take the knight, and then I take your bishop. So you lose a piece. Wait, now what happens if he took on h6? Then I take on g4, threatening your knight. And if your knight moves away, then d4 is hanging. Uh, okay. like knight takes d4 with discovered double, triple checkmate attack. What people in the chat don't understand, because they're like, the engine says this, is the psychological effect of your opponent playing rook e8 and you not seeing it. And you think, maybe I'm lost. I didn't see rook e8. I thought she would just take back. And now you're like, damn, black's threatening this and black's threatening this. Ah! And then, you know, I'm lower rated and where'd my center go? So he's thinking all of that. I had this big center. I liked my game. Now I'm on the defensive. Knight g2 is too passive. He's thinking all of this. It's, it's very hard to play chess when you don't have engines helping you. Yeah, he played bishop h6, as I, as I predicted. Yeah, now he's lost. So knight takes d4 is the winning move, not taking here. Knight takes d4 wins the game. The game's over. He can resign after knight takes d4. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes h4, resigns because all the pieces are hanging. It just wins immediately. And this move isn't good. That move gives away all the advantage. This is the only move that wins, and it wins immediately. So if she finds that, just she's going to win for sure. Okay, she played it instantly. She didn't even think. <laughs> okay, so. okay, so she's going to win now. Yeah, now the game's over. Yeah, white center totally collapsed. If a super GM was watching this game five moves ago and then showed up now, like if Ivantrick was walking around and then he walked around now, he'd be like, whoa, where'd white center go? What happened? White had pawns here and here and here and they're gone. And white's bishop was here stopping this and now the bishop is gone. And the queen was here defending the bishop and the queen's gone. He could actually resign here. He won't resign, but... She's threatening knight takes bishop, winning a piece. And if she takes this and, he, and, and takes this, the bishop is hanging, and then black's winning a piece anyway, and then black has a mating attack. The game's over, and Dina knows it's over. And her opponent didn't see knight takes d4, didn't see rook e8. Psychologically, it's devastating when your opponent makes tactical moves you don't see. He didn't see knight d4. He didn't see rook e8. His center is decimated. He knows he's getting outplayed. So the best moves here are plus four for black. And that's if white plays the best moves, which is not, you know, who knows what he's going to do. And he's choking on his rage. You can tell by looking at him. Yeah, he looks like he's suffering a little bit. Well, he, he understands that he's not seeing anything and that he's getting outplayed and that his center is gone. I mean, let's just go back. Let's look at this position. I mean, look at, look at White's position. It looks great. Like, pawns everywhere. White's slightly better. Looks good. And then just a few moves later, it's over. Center gets decimated. Because it's strategically very complicated. Let's see, can I find what happened? I, I give up. GF5. What's his rating? <clears throat> 1822, so he's a bit lower rated than Dina. 
she's 2164. P Princess says he's kind of cute, not going to lie. His mom's in the chat somewhere. P Princess, proud mom. Well, his mom disowned him after she takes <laughs> age six. He played brave at the beginning. <laughs> Lots of praise for the handsome opponent. <clears throat> His first move was perfect. <laughs> Cobra Madre protesting, no disowning. <laughs> Yeah, it was an, it's, it's been an interesting game. Dina's been confident the whole game because she understands the Carol Khan ideas. So she was never worried about getting run over on the king side. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I worry about. The pawns come in, I'm immediately anxious because I, I always mishandle it. Mm -hmm. But Dina's higher rated, so she wasn't worried. Oh, that's nice, Cobra Madre. She says, I'm a proud mama, win or lose. And if Dina wins, then I'm happy for her. <laughs> Typical Canadian philosophy. <clears throat> In America, the mom would shoot up the place. <laughs> well, that's real nice. That's how I am in poker. Like if I'm get knocked out, mm -hmm. you know, if they're if they're a nice person, then I feel happy they got some chips. You know, if somebody had to get them besides mm -hmm. me. If they're not nice, and you know, I'm bitter. Yeah, White's position is in shambles. Yeah. Okay, and he took on d4. I think queen takes h4 is forced. I don't think there's another move even to consider. Yeah. So she'll play that. Then I don't know what he'll play. Mm -hmm. So this knight's pinned and attacked, and this bishop is attacked, and knight's pinned, and this bishop is attacked. So the truth hurts, basically. Black can play, bishop takes knight check, queen takes bishop, rook takes e2, and black's up a piece and threatening mate, and threatening queen takes, trading queens. And the bishop is attacked right now. So white has a lot to do. White's got to uh, save, save all these pieces, all three of these pieces. I guess now that I think about it, I want to make sure I'm right without using an engine. It looks like if the bishop moves away, then rook e4 is really strong. Probably even better than what I was going to do. Yeah, rook e4. Damn. Yeah, Thomas. The truth hurts. Dana's, Dana's rating has gone down quite a bit. She was close to 2,400. But she'll gain rating points this tournament. Yeah. And she gained rating points her last tournament. Yeah, so hopefully she's on the way back up. Mm -hmm. She's got all of her IM norms. 
She's just got to get that rating to 2400 then she'll get a new title. That is correct, Shred the Fourth. Karen was in the Brad Owen poker vlog. Oh, yeah. In WPT in December last year. Yes, Shred the Fourth. Now, I busted out, um, but I busted out after Brad, way after Brad. He didn't last long at my table. He called it the Table of Doom, I believe, was the name of the video. Because you were in it? <laughs> and then the next day, he, of course, he's got a lot of money, so he, he bought in again the next day. When I met Karen and we were about to get married, she said, look, before we get married, I have something to tell you. I'm going to be going and playing lots of poker, so you have to be willing to put up with that. <laughs> and I was like, sure, sweetie. <laughs> hey, Big Daddy, how's it going? Yay, one bit. Big Daddy. Yep, I did. I did get to um, play with Brad Owen. Bishop of four. I wouldn't have known I was in the Brad Owen poker vlog if a friend hadn't texted me and asked me. I was like, oh, I didn't know I was in the vlog. Yeah, the two moves that I thought won for black, the engine says they're equally good. Bishop takes d4 and rook takes e2, or just rook e4 right away. Also winning is queen f6, and the knight knight's indefensible. She might play queen f6, because queen takes knight, trades queens, and she's up a piece. Like, this knight can't be defended, so rook e4 wins, queen f6 wins, just taking it and taking this wins. I think it's more professional not to take it and take this because you want to you want to win the knight, not the bishop, because then the bishop is hanging at the end, and you want to trade queens because then the black king isn't really open anymore. So I like queen f six as a human move, and I like rook e four second. The engine says rook e four slightly better than bishop takes, but all three of these moves win a piece. So a tough decision for Dina, which way to win a piece, because they all win. It's hard not to play rook e4. I think she's going to play rook e4. It's just hard not to. You think your pawn's going to resign if you play it. So I predict rook e4, but it's a tough decision because every move wins. Yeah, Big Daddy, everything's been going fine. Lance says Andrea Botez is winning now. I heard Alex lost and Andrea is winning. Can Dana get a norm if she wins, says Pepper. I don't know, probably not. Can who do what? Can Dana get a norm? No. Yeah, yeah. But she has enough norms for her next title of I Am. She's just got to get that rating up. They're claiming Dina lost rating points this tournament. Man, the truth hurts. Darn, I hope not. <clears throat> yeah, as a human, I recommend rookie four, which is also the computer move. Well, thank you guys. I said we have a, you do a good job with the commentary, and we still have a cozy vibe. We no, are, she played Bishop Takes D4. We are cozy. Okay, so he has to take, and then she will take on e2, and then she's up a piece. And she's threatening queen takes g2, queen takes g4 check. Mm Karen, can you do a good impersonation of Mr. Garrison? I believe the accents are very similar. I don't think Karen knows who that is. I don't. It says dusting and flying. It's not similar. He's a character in South Park. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even watch South Park. I'm a grown woman. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Nate Brady 23 is rating with a party of 89. Yay. Thanks for the raid. Thank you, Nate Brady.
Anna's losing now. Darn. Not only can black threaten a queen takes g4 check, but she could also play fg and bishop e4. God damn. Do you know who I haven't seen much of lately is Anna Rudolph. Or mm -hmm. is it Anna? Anna Rudolph. Agreed. I, th I think I saw her streaming the other day for the first time in a while. Yeah, Dina's winning. Yeah, Dina's winning. Up a piece. The engine says plus five for black. Why the board is 15 minutes delayed to prevent cheating. <clears throat> oh. All right, well, I think I'm going to go upstairs. I stayed a little bit longer because the game got exciting. Mm -hmm. I thought it might finish. Mm-hmm. All right, Chad, I have to go and do some other things, so I'm going to miss the last part of the game. But I enjoy talking with all you guys, and I hope Dina pull, you know, wins. Looks like she's going to. But, uh, you know, Devin's a little bit lower rated. Yeah, see you guys. And then we'll pack up. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's trying to learn. Her opponent's shaking his head now. Yeah, I may not have left it on the right chat over here. Oh, he's shaking his head. Mm-hmm. Andrea went from completely winning to completely losing in two moves. Aw. Dina's performed about her rating. She's going to get six out of nine if she wins this game. Good score. That's good dogs. I think Dina's going to break about even on rating. Yeah. Bishop G3. Ah, she played queen h3. That's more accurate than queen g4. Queen g4 is winning, but the engine likes queen h3 better. Now white has to play rook f2. And then we can trade rooks and play queen takes g4. This is the safer option for black, because when white trades rooks, he doesn't have any attack in the end game. It's trading pieces. Just down a piece for no pawns. And he played rook f2.
I mean, he's down a piece for no pawns. Now she'll play queen g4. The spectators are impressed. It's like before, before, and way before. The three guys watching. So he can resign any move. I don't know when he'll resign, but he's down a piece for zero pawns. Not good. Yeah, knight d3 is not a good move because... You, you, you want to take this and get rid of any of the counterplay. If, if you if you play knight take knight to d3, then d5 isn't defended. Now after queen here or queen d4, the black king is exposed and white's not black's not winning anymore. The the point is to stop counterplay. We're already up a piece. Queen takes g4 stops the counterplay because the queen tries to come in. We have queen e4. Or F4 defending E6. The point is to not let black do, is, is to not let white do anything. The point isn't to win material. Black's already up a piece. We're just trying to stop Queen D5 check and Queen E6 check, opening up the black king. Can you tell a joke? Uh, Sam Shankland. Um, Hans Niemann will soon become world champion and Gotham Chess will become a grandmaster soon. Put it in H, King H1. I think she's going to play Queen E4 check and he's going to resign. That's my prediction. Yeah, she played f4 because she wants to play bishop e4. Also good for forcing resignation. If white was your student, what would you say to them? Keep fighting.
this seems like a good time to resign. Or he won't resign. Rook F1. Probably Dina will take the bishop and hang checkmate. That's the most likely. The good engine announces made an 11. With, starting with knight d3. Also, bishop e4 is forced mate. No, he'll resign before Dina mates him. This is an excellent time to resign. I almost guarantee he'll resign. It's almost a guarantee. 99% he resigns. He can't make a move anymore. There's no moves. Nice game by Dina. She was very confident throughout through the complications. And then she really outplayed her opponent tactically in the late middle game. Oh. <clears throat> That's good. This game's going to end before 11. So I could take a nap before my... Chess lesson at two. Even the bad engine announces mate. Queen d4. The engine says that's a mistake. Best was resigns. He played bishop. She played bishop e4 check, then he resigned.
Yay, Dina wins. Go, Dina. So it was 32 moves. Well, it's nice to finish the tournament with two consecutive wins. You get six out of nine. Right, I'm going to use the restroom and change the scene and change the camera and so forth. Go, Dina. Uh, let's see. Turn the webcam off. I'll wait till Dina takes her camera before I do that. So Dina got five wins, two losses, and two draws. And then we'll do a post-mortem with, uh, with Dina in about 10, 15 minutes when she gets all settled. Dina's leaving her camera there. Yeah, I guess we can look at Andrea's board. There's a lot of red moves in this game. <laughs> so in this position, it says black wins with queen takes a2. But Andrea played f5, and now it says it's equal. It says queen h6, and black gives a perpetual. Now, this is 15 minutes ago, so uh, this isn't the current position. but I can go to the Botez live stream. All three results will happen in Andrea's game. So I guess, according to the engine, Andre is losing. I 
Yeah, this position's 15 minutes ago. I don't know what moves led up to the current position. Yeah, I don't want to show you the game from a long time ago. So. But anything could happen. Her opponent's lower rated than she is. Okay, it looks like she took her camera. Uh, post game interview. Let me turn off the. Let's see. I'll probably have to go here and turn it off. Yeah, okay. Then I can get the good camera for the Zoom interview. So Dina will be on Zoom and anal analyzing her game with me in about 10 minutes. And then you'll see you'll see me and Dina. I'm going to use the restroom. So this is the final position of Dina's game, which she won. I'm back. We're waiting for Dina to join us on Zoom. Uh, then we'll interview her and talk about the game, etc. Dina won her last two games. She scored six out of nine. And pretty, pretty decisive games. Five wins for Dina this tournament. Very good. Let's see what's going on in Botez's game. I don't know.
I guess if two engines are playing, then Andrea Botez is losing. But two engines aren't playing, so I don't know what's going on. Alex Botez lost her game. I heard Anna Crambling lost, but I'm not sure if that's true. And uh, uh, Dina won her game, and we're waiting for Dina to join us on Zoom, probably in two or three minutes. Andrea never played F3, although she just played it. Go, Dina. Andrea's game, all three results are possible. Wait, how am, I, how am I watching this? What did I do? Oh, I see, because I did that. Okay, well, that's okay. It says both sides have 30 seconds in Andrea's game. Yay, Andrea Stock Maiden won. Good, good. So technically, Andrea has a losing position, but that doesn't mean that she'll lose. Andrea's in a rook and pawn endgame, uh, down two pawns.
I hope Dina's getting set up for the Zoom call and she's not just watching Andrea's game, which is possible. Yeah, it looks like they've made time control. Andrea has drawing chances. Like if if two engines are playing, then then she would lose. But it's, it's a rook and pawn ending where there's a lot of pawns that could be captured. So some drawing chances, but the players have made time control. Yay, Dino won again. Ah, Dina's here. Or is coming. I think I think I miscounted. Andrea's actually down three pawns. Yeah, it's five. Oh no, she's down two pawns. I was right the first time. It's five pawns to three. I just can't count. But yeah, it's pretty lost. All right, I'm gonna stop watching because. Gotta watch Dina's game. Okay, we're ready with Dina. We'll be on Zoom in about 20 seconds. I'm trying to join with a good camera. says the camera's off. I'm trying to join with a good camera, but it won't let me. Okay, I'm gonna unplug the camera and plug it in so I can get the good camera going. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out which one's the camera. There we go. Sorry, I was getting the good camera. I was getting the good camera. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Yay, go Dina. You were giving what? I was getting the good camera instead of the bad camera. Oh, that's great. Thank mm -hmm. you for two months more views. Yes, so we, we finished strong, guys. We finished strong. Sorry about mm -hmm. the camera. So what happened is like sometimes it happens to me is that my um, laptop charger in the middle, you know, it has two cables. It's not like fully plugged in. Mm -hmm. And I didn't double check. And basically, I didn't put my computer on, on charge. And then it was the organizer and the arbiter who came to me during my game and who showed me a paper like he, he like he touched me on the shoulder and he showed me a, pa a paper no stream mm -hmm. so that's when i realized that just my computer like switched off because it wasn't charging 
the truth hurts. But more importantly, yeah, you okay. won, so that was good. Yeah, I'm curious. I tried to play a good game, and uh, it actually cost between, like, I was mad that every time I would just go, you know, GG. stick a coffee or to the bathroom, like, oh, to, to adjust my makeup, my opponent would immediately make the move. So I was like, okay, you play so fast, smart ass, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a lesson. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give him a lesson uh, for playing so fast. And uh, I think I did, although I, I don't know how well I played. Like he doesn't play e4, so I was I was preparing d4. Uh -huh. He also had a lot of games with e3, so I tried to deviate him from his prep by playing bishop b4. I had a classical game like that in 2019 against Sophie Mie, who is a um, international master, and I won that game and I qualified to win the World Cup. Next mm -hmm. to that game, it was the last round of Women's European Individual Championship. But it was such a long time ago, so I was like, no way he would get re be ready for Bishop B4. But he played right away C3 and Queen B3 as if he was ready, which was surprising. Right. But And that was kind of like um, improvising, but it felt like I was doing a good thing, but I don't know, honestly. Okay, well... The engine thought you were slightly worse or clearly worse for some of the game. Um, oh. And then in this position, uh, it wants white to play knight h4 and get the two bishops. Okay. So mm -hmm. it wanted you to play f6 here, but queen c7 is okay. Now it really wants to play knight h4. Yeah. Yeah, knight, knight a6, the engine didn't like. But I understood why you played it, because if you play c4, you have knight here, and then later in the game you can play knight b4. But... Yeah, well, I thought that his only idea should be to play c4. If he doesn't play c4, he's kind of like, yeah, it's it's not clear. And I also want to play c5 and take on knight b4s. Mm -hmm. So I knew that it was an ugly move in the moment, because I put my knight on the edge, and in the Russian school of chess, we say never put the right the knight on the on, knight on the winner's team, but it, it has, like, potential, and uh, that's how I tried to justify myself. Yeah, now the engine really wants to play knight h4. Basically, every move, knight h4. And, yeah, once you played h6, now now you're fine. I suggested this idea for him before he played it, knight h4, f4, g4, but the engine didn't like it. It thought he should still play on the I queen also, side. I was also curious if f6 was ever a move, like at any point. After bishop f6, g5, you can play f6 in this yeah, position. Yeah, I was looking at it and I wasn't, I couldn't under evaluate it mm -hmm. well enough, so... And as Ben says, you're right, chat, never play f6. I mm -hmm. was like, okay, maybe that's not the move. Yeah, just developing your pieces was good. Yeah. Yeah, and c5 is good. Yeah, this was all good. Yeah, in this position, he only has one good move, but I didn't think he would play it. <laughs> um, it's king h1. I don't even... Oh, God. No, I didn't even know what was the move. I was looking at this position, and I was like, I mean... I don't want to say that I'm winning because you would be mad, but at the same time, I think I'm winning. So yeah, but I you always like, think okay, you're winning. Whatever. Yeah. No, yeah. but I was like, okay, I will let him figure it out. I just like I don't know. I don't see moves for right, but okay, I'll let him figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he should I was play. Like, my time was very. My time was very low. At some point, I was like mm -hmm. maybe twenty minutes versus one hour. Yeah. But I was looking at the position. I was like, as soon as I figure out, like what to do in this middle game I'll, I'll like it's gonna be winning and then i'll 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 it won't be a problem the time and this is what happened like okay i played until 10 minutes but when i had 10 minutes on the clock i was already completely winning mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it wants to play king h1 and rook g1 so it says white has mm -hmm. an advantage there and after rook c1 it says it's equal and then uh, in this position, he thought for like 20, 25 minutes and made a terrible move. 
F6. Oh, no. Well, yeah, he oh, played no, Queen D1. Yeah, That's played Queen really D1. bad. Yeah. So... It, wait, was there some way... Wait, was there a way that I should, could have improved after F5? No, you played fine. This oh, is yeah, fine. played fine. This is fine, yeah. In this position, mm -hmm. the, the engine wants you to take on F5. And the reason is... I didn't like knight F5. Of, of course, I want to... Like, I see the tactic. Right. And I wanted to do it, but... But what if... Yeah, I, and after knight F5, after... then F6 is even stronger. Oh, really? Yeah. Man. Oh, no, this I, I didn't understand. Because, like, obviously, I almost wanted to play instantly knight takes e5 after queen d1. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, wait a second, because my Russian coach would always tell me never play instantly, always double check the lines, even if you calculated before, always double check, always look at the position as if it was new and fresh. So I looked at the position and I saw that knight takes e5, queen takes h4, and knight d7 fork. Right. So then I was like, okay, what if I start with e takes f5? But if I start with e takes f5, then there is knight takes f5. So right. I was like, okay, after f6, his his brain is just going to explode. So I will let his brain explode. f6 isn't a bad move, but this is slightly better than what you did. Yeah. But this is okay. And then here, it didn't like you taking on f5 because he had a good move that he didn't see. I didn't think he was going to see really? it. Really? I thought he was going to play badly the way he played. So it worked Wait, out like well. G5? But after after queen f6, you're much better. Oh shit, I didn't like g5. But is it is it probably he takes c f5? It's probably g5 again. Right. He should play he should play g5 here. And it says it's about equal. Shit. After queen takes f6, I didn't like g5, but I completely missed g5 here. Yeah. I'm still better though, right? The, I have a good engine, it says it's equal after g5. Oh, okay. The bad engine says you're better. Yeah. This is just a mess. What? I mean, you're going to win because you're yeah. a better player. That's right. That's what I thought then. Honestly, I'm, I'm yeah. glad we have this. We're aligned on this. Yeah. Yeah. I And um, I predicted all the mistakes he made. I said, he's going to take on G7 and he won't see Rook E8. Then he's going to panic and he won't see Knight G2. He's okay after Knight G2 here. But I didn't think really? he would see Knight G2. Yeah, he has to play uh, knight g2. After bishop h6, the game is over. Well, knight g2, I take on g4, no? You do take on g4, that is correct. Yeah. Man, what is this? This I is a mess, but I'd rather have black. No. Rook f8. F8. I cannot take on e3. You need to be careful. Yeah, let's see. Knight g2 takes knight h4. Yeah, the good engine says it's equal. It says you have to play king g7 here. Oh, yeah. King g7 is a nice move. I like uh -huh. it. That's true. Then it says he has to play bishop to d3, which nobody on earth is ever going to play. <laughs> the, the, the idea is to what? play queen g4 check. Wow. <laughs> but nobody, nobody's going to play bishop d3, but it's forced. Right, no, wow, that's beautiful. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Yeah, so I mean, you know, you're, you're gonna win anyway. But I thought he would play bishop h6 because I said he won't see knight yeah. g2 and he didn't see rook e8, I figured. So he's just gonna panic and it's, you know. Yeah, he was panicking, he was yeah. panicking a lot. He didn't see anything. Then after knight d4, you had a lot of issues. Should I win this way? Should I win this way? Should I win this way? I felt bad for you. Yeah, that's exactly. I was like, literally, I was so annoyed. I was like, man. So like after bishop f4, should I take on e2? Should I take on d3? Should I play rook e4? Should I play queen f6? Mm -hmm. I was like, where's the, like, what? Yeah, yeah, takes the, rook e4 final. and queen f6 are all equally winning. They're all the, like plus five for you. Yeah, there's also rook e2. Cute. Yeah, well, don't do that. Win yeah, winning a piece I figure is better. out it's not yeah. worth it's not worth sacrificing. Yet. Yeah, I thought you were gonna play like, rookie four. Oh, well, I thought like if I just go direct bishop d four, then I uh, trade pieces, but I also put my rook on the second rank, right. so I always I, 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 you get to pick so. which way you win. Yeah. 
Yeah. The technique was perfect. And, uh, mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah, very nice. I like, I like both of your last two games. Very good. Oh, I'm glad. Well, I'm, I have one question, though. You said that queen f6 was better than e takes f5. Uh -huh. What should I do after g5? Queen takes f6, g5. Then, then you take. Let me uh, get the good engine, because it's a stupid engine, stupid. Hey, don't talk like that about my engine. It's not your it's engine. Stockfish, you should you need to respect it. It's my engine. I developed it. What? You you developed Stockfish Eleven Light? Yes, no. I did. No. Bishop yeah, it D5, says uh, Bishop D four or what? So Queen F seven, and it just likes your position a lot. Oh, okay. Well, for me that was lame. That was too lame. Mm hmm. Yeah, it says you're plus one. Oh. Yeah, because your bishop yeah. eventually is going to go to e4, and that's going to be annoying. Right. Your pieces are just much better than his. Correct. I like the way the move that he thought the longest about in the game was one of his worst moves. Queen d1. Oh, well, this is the, this is what always happens. Uh, come yeah. on. I mean, it's basics of Russian school of chess. I tell it to Andre every single time. Mm -hmm. If you think a uh, move more than for more than 10 minutes, you're going to make a mistake. You're going to blunder if you if you think more than 20 minutes, you're going to blunder 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like it's true. Just doesn't believe me. Yeah. I mean, John Nunn said it. The key the the um to say the gangster of the Russian school of chess, Mr. Grandmaster in British Grandmaster John Nunn has written in his book. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the book? Secrets of Practical Chess. I think that's how it's called. Mm -hmm. My Russian coach prays to that book. It's like his Bible. John Nunn is like one of the world's smartest people, not related to chess. Oh, really? Yeah, if you look at his Wikipedia page, you'll be very impressed. Yeah, the, the gangster of the Russian school of chess, yeah. the gladiator of the Russian school of chess, British grandmaster, born and raised British grandmaster, John Nunn. Mm -hmm. What's funny is another British grandmaster, Jonathan Spielman, speaks perfect Russian. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. But That's John Nunn does not. Yeah. Nice. Well, guys... My dear Twitch, my dear YouTube, we are wrapping the show. We're we are wrapping Reykjavik Open. I hope it has been a blast. I cannot um, show the gratitude that I have towards all of you for having watched and rooting for me, having been watching and rooting for me for all this time. Thank you so much. We finished strong with six out of nine. We would probably lead the army of the streamers. We will lead the streamers army. We are on the road to take down Hikaru because he's right now the strongest chess streamer that mm -hmm. exists. Levy is not a problem, I'm sure. He doesn't even play, so he auto uh, disqualifies, self disqualifies. And uh, yeah, Ben, I hope you, I mean, thank you so much for tuning in for this broadcast starting from the round five. It was amazing to have you all this time. I hope you're not too tired. Thank you for Karen for being there. Thank you to Karen for being a Karen. And uh, yes, guys, love all. Yay, go Dina. Good score. Good tournament. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, it's it's quite upsetting because obviously um, I did not do any like performance. Like I didn't like, I lost to high rated and I won against uh, low rated. And they didn't even win all my games against Liberated. But on the bright side, yeah, I mean, it's 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 satisfying to finish on wins. I feel better than in Prague, even though in Prague I had a better tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I play, I started playing a lot of new openings. So chess wise, it's it it was cool to have an opportunity to practice all these new openings and kind of get away with it. 
I think it's a great learning experience. And if I were to like to have like hopes and expectations about my competitive chess play, then it definitely would be uh, after having studied more. But that being said, I absolutely enjoyed being here as a streamer and uh, score some points. It does feel good, and um, the road to I am is not the, ch the is not. Like, it's not over. We're still on track, mm -hmm. guys. We're going for I am. Also of note, on your channel during the game, your opponent's mom was watching and commentating. Really? Mm -hmm. Wait, my opponent is like 28. Yeah, but his mom was watching. That's so cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, shout out to... Uh, What's his da Dave? I think David. Yeah. Name shout out to David. She's mom. still watching Cobra Madre. Still watching on your channel. Oh, all right. Well, David, uh, thank you for watching. Now I feel bad about talking <laughs> bad about my opponent, but I didn't mean it in a in a in a bad way. I hope he enjoyed the game. I hope it was a good learning opportunity. And, um, well, what can we say? He didn't do that many mistakes. It was just complicated, right? It was complicated. That was super complicated then... middle game. Yeah. Yeah. Was I was actually complimenting so was... The, the way he played F4, G4, F5, because a lot of lower rated players, when I was playing chess as a teenager, they were always playing for a draw against higher rated players. But obviously, yeah, that's true. he was putting you to the test by pushing all his kingside pawns. Yeah, no, 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 I did. I, I was challenged uh, definitely in the first 15 moves because I was, uh, quite, yeah, I wasn't sure, like, uh, what was the right way. And I figure out, okay, he's going to push the pawns on the king side and probably create weaknesses. So I need to counter strike in the right moment and then I'll have an advantage. And that's what happened. But yeah, it was complicated. Mm -hmm. That's why, I mean, I basically had 20 minutes against one hour, which is very impressive, too. He did put the uh, Grandmaster under a time pressure. So, um, kudos to that. All right, great tournament. We should raid. Is Andrea still playing? We can raid Andrea. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, she's still playing. Oh, she's still playing. Yeah, I thought she'll... Yeah, okay, she's in trouble, but... Yeah. Who knows? What is she like? She's one pawn down, two pawns down. Mm -hmm. She was well, two pawns down 10 minutes ago. Now I don't know. But yeah, you know. Yeah, she's still here. Her opponent does look confident. So, and he, she has a strong A3 pawn. So who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? I mean, he might go crazy. So absolutely, let's let's raid Andrea. Um, Thanks for playing Alex such great chess and such exciting chess this tournament. Everybody enjoyed it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ben, for being there. You're always uh, a, a great input. You always bring me uh, strength and carry the show. Uh, we're going to read both as live. I think Alex is still on the commentary with Hammer, and she's, fun fact, she's sitting just three meters from me on the other side. So I'm going to join her and grab some snack. And in the meantime, we're going to send Red to both as live. And dear YouTube, thank you for watching once again. I did not do any... Um, um recaps of this tournament because well youtube you were watching the games anyway and i'm gonna be back home to grind uh when I'm, I'm coming back on saturday tonight actually tonight we might have a party we might have a party tonight uh, it's gonna be a bodas party but um mm -hmm. We might also, I don't know if we're going to stream it or record, but that's going to be juicy. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And, and yeah, I'm going to be back. And I have I have a lot of exciting things coming up. I've been teasing you for a while. I have like a new project, chess project that I cannot wait to share with you. So yeah, you're going to all find out very soon. Thank you so much. And big shout out to Moss, Sant, and Hasina. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. And HVV Bad, of course. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ben. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.
and uh, love you all and cannot wait to see you all um, somewhere on my next stream. Okay, bye-bye.